Good morning guys. I am at a job changing out this condenser. I'm going to put in a heat pump. It's at a double wide trailer. We've already changed out the coil so I can reuse that. I just got to take the R22 expansion device off. We're just going to use the piston from the heat pump. But I feel like somebody's watching me. That's a lot of damn cats. That's the leader, I guess. He's staring me down. Take it easy, pal. I have pumped down the unit. Go ahead and separate the suction and liquid lines. I taped them off so no debris gets in there. What I'm going to do is go inside and take out the TXV, the R22 TXV. Take it off. Go ahead and hook everything back together. I'm not going to put the piston in yet. I'm going to blow things out and then put the piston in. Just so it doesn't catch anything on the piston. Uh, we use the piston that comes with the new heat pump. That should be a 70. I will check and see, but I'm pretty sure the three tons is a 70 for Goodman. So I'm going to go ahead and take that TXV out and we can get on with our work. This is our Mortex coil. Mortex is a very common coil used in single wide, double wide, different kinds of trailers. What I'm going to do is unbolt this TXV, just like a regular Goodman TXV. Unbolt it here and here, take it out. Take where the equalizing line goes into the suction line, take it off, put a Schrader valve in it, and put a cap on it. And uh, we should be good to go. In fact, we'll have caps here and there. I can't remember why I put a cap there. Maybe I was pressure testing, it was raining, I don't know. But there's a cap up here, so I don't remember why that is. But remove this thing, I'll leave the piston out, I'll blow it out. And then we can put the piston in, solder in our outdoor unit, and get on with our business. We will have to run a new wire for the heat pump. But that's okay, we're only going about 10 feet or so. I see we have our TXV removed here. Save that. Put our connectors back together. Piston is not in there. As soon as we're ready, after finish blowing it out, I'll take this back off, put our, drop our piston in there, and then we can go about our business. I still have to remove the sensing bulb because it's wrapped heavily. So I need to go get something to get it out and cut that tie strap there. The old Goodman is away, and the new Goodman is here. I have it up on my blocks. Drainage purposes and just general cleanliness, I think they're better on blocks. I'm going to fit up the piping and go ahead and weld that in. And we'll move on to the pressure testing and the wire hookups. I have my lines fitted up. Expanded the lines here and here so it's easy to braze. I always expand them so I'm facing in so I can braze them easier. No reason to make it life harder than it's got to be. Got to weld up the two service valves. Try to make nice smooth bends. You can usually bend the 3 8 by hand, but the uh, larger sizes usually want to use the bender for those. You can try to bend them, but you can, usually can't get any tight curves on them without kinking them off. So I'm going to go ahead and weld these up. I'm going to attach the electrical, high voltage anyway, then fish a new wire in for the low voltage. I have the Testo tightness test on now. Basically, it hooks a temperature probe up to the pipes takes that into account when it's doing uh, nitrogen testing. So if there's a change in temperature on the pipe, it'll compensate the drop in pressure for that. So you could have a drop in pressure of like one PSI, but it will show you had no drop because maybe the temperature went down on the pipe. So the pressure would have then gone down. But have those hooked up right now on our lines. And after this, I'll be pulling a vacuum going to replace a the thermostat because it's just a one heat, one cool thermostat and pull a new thermostat wire. My tightness test held for about half an hour or so, so we should be good to go. What I'm doing now is I'm uh, pulled the new wire here. Got a new eight wire run inside and out. I got to change the thermostat out because it's incompatible as well. So I'm going to do those, start pulling the vacuum. By the time I'm done doing the other work, the vacuum should be done. This is the digital thermostat I'm taking off the wall. If you look on the backing plate of it, you can see on the backing plate it has sort of a four wire setup. It has an RH and RC for two transformer systems, a Y for the compressor or contactor, a W for heat, and on the end here we have our G for the fan. Since I put in the heat pump, I'm putting in the Focus Pro 3000 uh, tried and true economical stat. They still have a five-year warranty for the Pro versions. 
this sucker over here came from like a store or something so I'm sure it doesn't have a five year warranty and it just doesn't have the durability and doesn't have a common anyway so it's so homeowners can replace their old mercury stats I'm assuming but it's in my opinion they're not very good but that's just me well we have everything finished up except for the insulation on the line set I'll do that in just a minute about to start things up for the first time make sure my ports are closed there on the gauges I clean my stuff off the top here all right we'll hit our breaker voila and she's alive we're gonna let her run for a few minutes and we'll check on see how she's doing I have my sling psychrometer head out here I'm gonna turn it on DC volts on the transmitter up here I have it on temperature I'm gonna turn it on and hopefully it'll pick it up down here try it again since it was off if we sink and we have let's see 89.4 degrees so as you see it's rising, going up a little bit 89.5 degrees perfect We've been running for about 15 minutes now. Our target superheat is around 20, so we might have to add just a little bit of charge to bring it down. But we're pretty close. I'm gonna let it run for about five or 10 more minutes while I'm picking up. And we have our... ...70 degree wet bulb inside. We have the wireless transmitter on the return now. And according to that wet bulb, with this dry bulb outside of being 90, we need about 20 degrees of superheat. So we'll let it sit for a minute. It looks like we're going to have to put a little bit more in it. But that's okay. As you see, guys, our pressures are 338 over 135. We have a 18 degree superheat, 5 degree subcooling. We look over here at the meter. I look right about in line with what we should have. Our wet bulb is still around 70. It dipped down in the 60s. And Came back up to 70, probably because I opened the door. I'll let it run for a few more minutes, but this one looks said and done. I will see you guys on the next one. I bleed for my money. But I'm just a college dropout Who gives his weeks to break the mean Falls in the tide line Is washed out to sea If I